Thank you, Andreas, so much for being with us here at the IPM. We're very glad to have you. Uh, I am going to make a short introduction of you, uh, and then we will proceed with some questions for the Academy and Philosophy section. But let me just restate our uh, very warm thanks uh, to having uh, you with us. We were very much looking forward to doing an interview with you. Yes, okay. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure for me as well. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Uh, so, uh, Andreas, uh, Professor Andreas Bea is Professor of Philosophy and Medieval Philosophy at the University of Cologne. He's also, for many years, the director of the Thomas Institute, an institute dedicated to the study of medieval philosophy in many of its areas. They run uh, several projects about which we will talk briefly during this interview. Um, Andreas uh, was a Heisenberg stipendiat in Germany uh, before taking up his uh, post. He has many uh, uh, awards worth of mentioning. I will just mention a few. He has a uh, Dr. Uh, Honoris Causa by the Sofia University San Clement uh, and uh, has been active for many years uh, editing the Miscellanea Medievalia series, uh, a very famous series for our field uh, that um, uh, also collects the volumes from the uh, famous Kölner Medievisten Tagung, uh, also a hub of uh, medieval philosophy and medieval studies throughout Europe that is held in Cologne under the organization of Professor Speer for many years. Andreas, I would like to start asking you about your um, biographisches Werdegang with regards to the Thomas Institute. Um, how did you um, experience directing uh, one of the leading institutes in medieval philosophy in the world, and how has that evolved throughout the years? Uh, Indeed, I first came to the Thomas Institute in 1988. Um, this is uh, more than 30 years ago, it's 35 years ago, um, after my PhD, and I also was um, a high school teacher for two years, and um, then I got the opportunity to enter the institute um, as um, yeah, the as a scientific assistant and collaborator of the former director, um, Albert Zimmermann, Professor Albert Zimmermann, who also was the president of the SIAPM. Um, and um, so I worked with him and did my habilitation uh, at the Thomas Institute at this time. And um, then before I received the Heisenberg grant for five years and then started first um, as a professorship um, in Würzburg um, for four years before I returned in 2004 uh, to the Thomas Institute as a director um, of the Thomas Institute, which I'm uh, uh, which I'm then since 2004. Yeah, and um, indeed it is um, also, uh, I think, a very interesting time when you look um, but uh, how the discipline yeah, changed in our time in this time. When, when, I, when I entered the Institute, um, okay, we, it, it, was, um, it, it was a time um, where everything yeah, was, had a certain kind of stability, but also um, it was uh, it was fixed, but then also what what uh, what became an, an part of uh, a part of a, of a dynamics we, we we had was then for example if you think uh, one year later 1989 um, the dramatic political change in Europe the fall of the Iron Curtain the the opening to the eastern countries you mentioned our the relationship to Sofia University in Bulgaria. It's uh, emerged from, from this opening, and uh, the Thomas Institute always had um, very good contacts, even during the, the hard communist time, uh, to keep contacts to colleagues in, um, in, in uh, yeah, uh, Poland, in, in Czechoslovakia, and so on and so on, which now um, became really um, yeah, a very important issue. Uh, this is the this is the one the one side and the other side which moved, and this is. Um, um, I was involved in the organization of the 10th World Congress in Erfurt, where this came up 
how um, yeah, let's see, complex, multifarious, um, diverse, um, um, yeah, the, the field of medieval philosophy became. I just mentioned um, the importance of the of the of the of the um, uh, of the languages of the cultural regions. Also, the philosophy which I studied was mainly Latin. When I was a student, was mainly Latin. And, and now it, it became absolutely diverse, um, reaching out um, to, 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 to Hebrew, Arabic, Greek, other Byzantine, uh, uh, and then also the importance um, um, of, the, uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the ordinary of the languages, um, um, so like, like uh, German, French, Italy, uh, Italian. So um, this, this was an important field and also the opening to, uh, to other parts of the world. So the field became really international. Um, so um, that, the con that, that one of the conferences, the last conferences took place in, um, in Brasilia, uh, in Brazil, and it shows this um, um, uh, com complexity. So maybe let's put it this way, um, that medieval philosophy in the period I'm talking about became really a global phenomenon. So we are now talking about global history and um, which has become a an, 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 an real issue uh, um, uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in history and uh, also on, on a, from a conceptual point of view. And I think something like this we are facing in our field as well. Yes, this gives me uh, uh, something to think about for uh, the next question that I was meaning to ask you. Um, you've had uh, a tremendous experience with having a purview of many different subfields of medieval philosophy. You mentioned the diversity of languages uh, as something that um, has uh, uh, become more and more important for the field. And you have recently uh, written uh, a wonderful article in the Recherche de Theologie et Philosophie Medievales um, uh, entitled Wie schreibt man die Philosophie Geschichte des Mittelalters? Anmerkungen mit besonderer Rücksicht auf der Grundriss der Philosophie, one of the main uh, uh, multi-volume publications mm -hmm. dedicated to uh, to uh, the history of of, our, of medieval philosophy, one of the, um, the main ones in our field uh, overall. Um, so I guess my question would be, um, how do you see the practice of, given that the, the field has changed so much and perhaps you are a privileged, uh, you have a privileged standpoint to, to see the diversity of approaches in, in medieval philosophy. Uh, how do you think about this question lately of how one should write uh, the history of medieval philosophy? Indeed, this is a question which drives me. Uh, that is in the focus of my it's one of my focuses of my interest and I'm preparing a, a book on this uh, um, uh, raising raising the questions um, how to um, write and to rewrite um, the history of a millennium which we call um, the Middle Ages which is one of the problems which is one of the problems because as you know the uh, this term um, 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 emerged from a certain debate discussion uh, in, in in Italy in the 14th century uh, between Petrarch and uh, and 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 his uh, um, uh, companions. And uh, is, is, I think when we take it seriously, it's just um, um, a category which um, uh, can be applied to the Latin tradition, but it was also applied in a very specific way. Uh, be, namely, as an exclusivist category um, uh, to to, uh, to uh, yeah um, um, erase more or less this millennium from the history of philosophy, which reflects um, often the status of uh, medieval philosophy in the historiography and also in the teaching of philosophy at universities. So there are not so many universities um, um, which treat. Uh, a, a, a millennium of philosophy, history of philosophy and history of science, we have also to say this is because this is, goes hand in hand um, in the way it should be treated. So for the, if you look to a regular course, um, you have then some Plato, some Aristotle, then you jump directly to the early modern. If you are lucky, you have some Anselm, some Aquinas and 
that's it more or, more or less. Um, and um, so um, uh, we have a historiographical um, a problem. I always say there is a trap, the medieval trap we are in. And together with the focus on the Latin period, and then we kick it out. Um, and we also kicked out um, um, the Arabic and the Jewish and the Hebrew tradition, uh, the Hebrew tradition, the Byzantine tradition as well, because, um, for example, this periodization does in no way apply to, those, to, to philosophy in those, in those uh, cultural areas. So I think we are now in a, I, I find, extremely interesting situation. So the old narratives, I think, uh, they don't work anymore. And the, and the, uh, and the new Überweg shows it because um, they were really, um, let's see, um, playing this very, very um, diverse uh, possibilities um, to, um, to phrase and to present um, the philosophy of, of, of those periods. They were using, sometimes they were using categories like, uh, like the Middle Ages, then centuries, then regions, and so on. So that, uh, um, I think we are now in the situation that the field emerged so widely um, to um, uh, and become so widespread and open. When you think about um, um, uh, Deliveras' book from the very, uh, from the early 90s, where he talked about the heritage oublié of Arabic philosophy, right now when you look to the field, everybody is making Arabic philosophy. So it has become in some parts more prominent than, 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 than the Latin tradition as well. So although I think there's, there's, a, there's, an entire, there's a huge dynamics uh, which comes from um, opening new fields, learning new languages, bringing them to the field. And now we have to, uh, to think about how we can uh, uh, present this history um, no longer um, according to the uh, to the, to the historiography of Western philosophy, but as an entangled philosophy, but as an, an entangled narrative that brings together um, the, the, the different uh, histories, so to say, of knowledge in the different uh, in the different language and cultural areas, and how to present this. I have no, I have not a, 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 a fixed solution. Uh, I think it's, but this is fine. We, we shouldn't, we shouldn't close this. Um, um, door too early and uh, a little bit to enjoy the openness of this question and 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 to let it go a, a little bit and to to experiment and to see how we can um, uh, properly um, uh, present um, um, the, this millennium in all its richness and uh, complexity um, uh, to, to 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 a wider audience. Uh, to interest more colleagues, even from 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 ancient and in particular from contemporary philosophy, to look at at, at the treasure of these sources and to understand that we cannot understand the development um, of philosophy and the development of the history of sciences um, without taking seriously into account what happened in this in this in this period in this millennium. This is, I think. Uh, for, for me, it is um, one of the questions I'm really engaged um, with, and um, which I, I I find are um, are very important. Yes, and um, I've spent some time at the Thomas Institute. I have the uh, privilege to do so, and I think from your answer, uh, I see that your um, take on this is also reflected at the numerous projects that the Thomas Institute runs. Uh, we can see there are uh, tons of projects dedicated to Arabic, to Jewish philosophy, but also to the addition of uh, important uh, Latin texts. We can mention here, for example, the Durandus uh, editions, uh, but also the Averroes uh, digital editions, which uh, is a fantastic uh, ongoing project. Um, can you talk a little bit about which projects the Thomas Institute is yeah. uh, is right now engaged with? Yeah, yeah. Um, indeed. Also, I will first focus on uh, because you mentioned already uh, three projects which are very uh, very important. Um, the the one is um, that we are now uh, 
they have ne next week they have the an evaluation of our um, uh, uh, large trilingual uh, Avaris project, which is a long term academy project, and um, uh, deals with the with writings with, with, uh, of Avaris on, on natural philosophy mainly. This is the focus on it, but in the three languages um, at the same time. So we are we are we are um, uh, searching and 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 uh, researching and editing. The, the Arabic, the Hebrew, and the Latin traditions. And we also try to understand the dependency between the three languages, how this works. This is a, this is a, a, a huge and very, very interesting work. So um, this is mainly a work supervised by my, by my colleague, uh, David Wilmer. Because, and, and he is one of the he he is one of the exemplars of the new generation of the medievalists, which I'm not, um, who knows all the languages. Although he he equally studied when he was when he was a student already um, Arabic and Hebrew and Latin and Greek. So I'm um, this was not the case, even not the pop, the opportunity when I was a student. So so um, and um, um, but this is a gift and um, this is a this is a very important. Um, opening of new possibilities. And the Averis project also stands for one of the tendencies, I think the Thomas and Sue was always in the forefront, that is um, um, opening um, the doors to the digital world. So um, I'm also, in, um, I think, initiated and I'm the speaker of the Cologne Center for e Humanities. Um, so we, we, are, uh, uh, we are trying to elaborate and to use the chance of Digital methods, digital um, databases, and so on, um, um, to um, uh, to make um, to make it possible um, to deal with such a huge amount of sources. Um, and this is the but but the Averis has become now an extremely prominent figure. I, I know when I was there in the in the in the end of the eighties, also thirty five years ago, this was something for a very specialized group. I think now. Averis is on the on the on the table of everybody who um, uh, treats um, um, uh, medieval philosophy in this or that way, and in which language or, uh, in which language who, um, uh, whoever it, it it might be. Although I can only read them in Latin, so that is. But this is a situation Albert the Great and Thomas Aquinas were in as well. So they or the <laughs> we are the, um, he, uh, they were dealing with with the Latin Averis. But this is uh, also then very important to see th this kind of work we are doing. You can only do in a work um, uh, in, in the group, so that you have a group of of experts, of colleagues uh, who are uh, working on a very confidential basis, collaborating face to face, and um, yeah. And then we are lucky to to uh, be able to. Um, uh, fulfill uh, and to finish uh, one of the of the great um, of, uh, um, um, uh, yeah missing project that is the Maimonides des Latinus edux neutrorum to make a critical edition uh, and Diana Disendi is in charge of it which is um, um, I think a very important point and then the Durandus you mentioned uh, is a very important um, uh, project also in methodological um, perspective. Because um, we have uh, we have here a kind of an, an open uh, tradition of transmission where we can look into a very specific um, um, situation uh, at the beginning of the 14th century in Paris, um, where uh, Durandus reacts to the discussion, and so we have we have then a, a two version edition or at least a three version edition. Um, uh, which emerges from one manuscript, and we, we are able to establish a new methodology to um, which um, I think is um, important, um, an important contribution or to philology um, in this field that you that you not only dealing with an archetype, but that you that you are that you develop a methodology where you where you can um, um, yeah um, really. Um, uh, reconstruct, um, um, they can reconstruct an, an open tradition of a of a of a complex and uh, um, transmission of text, which reflects a, 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 a lively debate at a certain point, 
and to make this then appear in a in in a in a printed edition. And now we are also starting a digital um, uh, uh, version uh, on our homepage um, this year. Um, this I think um, uh, those are um, yeah parts a, a, a part of the project. Um, you know we have the classic one with the Meister Eckhart and the Cusanos as well uh, in the Thomas Institute and. And 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 I'm also um, interested and engaged in those some um, history of science as slash um, um, texts on um, yeah medieval aesthetics so to say. Um, those are um, yeah parts uh, uh, I, some examples um, um, of things going on in the Thomas Institute. It shows you that we that we have a wonderful group of um, of people working there. And, uh, and and you can learn a lot um, just being there and um, and uh, interacting with them. And uh, this is, I think, a very important um, point. I have to treat if you uh, uh, if you have an if you can establish a collaborative and open um, atmosphere where people really trust and share ideas. Yeah, this is, I think, the key for fruitful um, scholarly collaboration. So for partnerships so that 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 every that that it is clear to whom belongs the idea that you respect it, that you uh, and, and 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 but nevertheless that you are mutually interested that you that you that you exchange um, ideas and that you take part in what uh, uh, what your colleagues are doing. My last question resonates with that uh, former point. Uh, we have done an interview, a video interview series in this uh, section with um, scholars about the future of medieval philosophy. Uh, yeah. They envision this future. Uh, how would they like it to be and what steps do they think should mm -hmm. be taken now to assure uh, the discipline continues thriving? Uh, you have been also engaged in uh, interdisciplinary uh, mm -hmm. work. In particular, yeah. I can think of the artist graduate school that you have been a director of uh, in the mm -hmm. uh, University of Cologne. Um, and uh, perhaps uh, um, you could tell us your own answer to what should the future of medieval philosophy be within the humanities within this broader sheen of uh, uh, engagement with, with the humanities. Um, so how do you see the future for us? I think there are uh, maybe four important points um, um, I, would, I would summarize in this, but points to the strategy for, that I have for the Institute. One you mentioned, interdisciplinarity is very important and we are experts in this, but we have also to be uh, uh, um, to to talk to uh, and to uh, to collaborate with the medievalists, with, with people in in this field. This is one this one thing. The, uh, we have to second. We have to um, interest the philosophers. So we have we 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 are, we are uh, 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 more or less standing on more than one leg. Yeah, um, the, we are we we have to uh, we have to. And it is equally difficult sometimes um, to interest uh, medievalists for philosophical arguments and not just taking and treating the text as, let's see, historical sources or so, but becoming engaged into the content. Yeah. And the second, this is, on the other hand, you have to, to show the philosophers um, that this is not just historical stuff, but that these people are really smart. That is uh, uh, that is not just an historical reconstruction of something what is in the past, but what is a what a real contribution um, um, to a to a, to an ongoing debate because it, to to some extent philosophers we are always discussing the same old questions, but um, but we have to um, to make them um, um, the questions of our own and and giving our own answers so that that in historical context and the and for me, the most important thing in this respect is to make understand that um, um, uh, that concepts have a history, that questions have a history, and that the history is not just an accident. 
um, that history um, is part of the formation of understanding the question and the problem. And if you are not aware of the history, yeah, um, you are um, uh, you you can you can be very naive with respect to the problems. Be, um, which uh, when when you when you just um, let's see say okay let's forget about the history we are only interested of what we call the content the content is nothing that we can separate from the history um, of a context and of a question yeah then I think what but as I told you what I did um, and this where it is important is the, that we that we are uh, that we are really actively using and going into the digital world um, that is. Um, uh, and and to be open for for uh, for new method methodology and um, we have an advantage because the most of our stuff um, um, is um, available online more and more. Um, it is uh, there, there there are no these um, restrictions of um, um, when you are have a recent book published. It is behind the paywall. Yeah, our resources are not behind the paywall mostly. So. Um, and, uh, and 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 also um, to, um, to to present the complexity of our field to become interconnected. And I know um, that in, in many universities, not only here in Cologne, the medievalists are in the forefront of using those me those methodologies. So I think someone who is studying uh, medieval philosophy um, should should learn some of those techniques and methodology methodolo methodologies. Um, uh, this is, I think, simply a technique you you, you have to know um, uh, for the future. Yeah, and the fourth question is the languages, the the, the, the multi, uh, as more as much languages as possible, because um, um, the field the field is multilingual, multicultural, and 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 uh, uh, and, and uh, even multi-religious. So we have we have we have we have um, a really a millennium which is so rich. And um, and and the, and it, to a certain extent, it can uh, because it is of this. It can be a, a become a laboratory um, of um, of of how um, such an interaction of cultures um, can happen and what philosophy contributes to it. So my 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 answer in this respect would be: We are what philosophy what, what philosophy provides is an idea of a kind of a universal. Universality of reason, a kind of a universality of reason, which is necessary um, um, in, in, in order um, in order to uh, uh, to understand and in order to um, become partners and 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 and, and, and fellows um, and even contemporaries over um, over um, cultural borders and languages. Um, yeah, because because there, there must be something some uh, something in common. Um, in order to make translations possible and reasonable, and what we and what we I think insist as philosophers is that it is um, that that concepts um, 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 uh, yeah can be understood um, over different languages within the translation processes. What we can see, and so the universality of reason is might be uh, might be the claim of philosophy um, to a global world. Yeah, and the, and the and the medieval period um, is a period where we can demonstrate and study in a laboratory um, how this universality works, um, even in, in in the most prominent um, transfer processes from uh, Greek into Arabic into Latin and so on. Here we can he, here we see how it works and we can study it. So this could be an interesting. Um, Future for for medieval philosophy um, that we that we leave the medieval cave and uh, and take the millennium um, as what it is um, uh, as a as a, as a extremely rich um, uh, and uh, uh, and complex um, phenomenon which is worthwhile to study uh, from uh, for for many many people and disciplines. That is very true. Thank you so much, Andreas, for these inspiring answers. Thank you for um, asking me, for inviting me for this interview. And uh, yeah, um, let's stay in contact. And I'm looking forward to uh, what will happen in the future. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.